Hi, my name is Cameron Carlos with AnimeLocation.tv. I'm here at OhioCon 2019 with my good pal, Mr. Aaron Dismuke. How you been, mister? I've been well. Considering last night? Oh, yeah, that was something. <laughs> so it's been a long time, as everyone can tell, between the giggles, how long me and Aaron have known each other. And the last time we met each other was at OhioCon 2010, nine years ago. How have you been in the last nine years? I've been good. Car crashes? Uh, there, there have been some. Fewer in the past six years. You know, if you ask about the past six years, I haven't had a single car right. crash that I had to report onto my insurance. I love the report part. Yeah, I mean, you know, you, you can look into details as much or as little as you want. <laughs> All righty. Um, you know, a really, really big production that you got to be part of recently has been the AT&T Rooster Teeth production of Ruby being Oscar, uh, playing off... Uh, uh, playing off all that great cast. What's it been like in the fan response to that? I mean, I remember when you were announced and I was like, Aaron? Yeah. And it was really, really surprising to hear it. How has it been working on that project? It's It's been awesome. I uh, I really liked the audition sides when I first got them. Like, I still remember it was, uh, it was the scene where, like, I'm talking to Ozpin in my head yeah. and uh, I'm talking about, uh, uh, like... He's trying to prove that he is real and is a separate entity and not just a voice in my head. And yeah. so he's like, he's like, describe this room that you've never seen before. And I'm like, how could I do that? And he's like, just do it. And then like, I start to do it. And I'm like, how do I know that? Yeah. Uh, like that really like that scene. I really like the nuance of it and the, I don't know, the actor's challenge, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and that's what that part has been for me. Like it's just a whole bunch of actors challenges because now uh, I occasionally am like channeling Ozpin through Oscar. Yeah. And so like that's something I've never done before is like try to do one character's voice but with another character's cadence and mannerisms. And body language. Yeah. yeah. And then after that they were like well you did that all right. So now we're going to have you be like four different other iterations from Ozpin's past lives. So then I was Ozma. Sorry. And uh, like an, uh, an inquisitor version of Ozma. Yeah it's been pretty rad. Uh, actually, I'm only on episode six of the current season, so I need to catch up. Oh, okay. Thank well, you. Good luck. <laughs> no, I kept up with most of it. It's just I, for some reason, got stuck at episode six. I don't know why. Yeah, delayed spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> Since last time we got to talk, you've become a script writer for Funimation, working on shows like Fairy Tale, Nakaba, and Full Metal Panic. Which, by the way, I picked up Nakaba just recently. Nambika. Nambika. Thank yeah, you. No I, I just picked it up. Uh, literally this week. Nice. It came in the mail. I hope you like it. Uh, well, A, also is because I, I get to do another hometown friend of mine, Mr. Uh, Damon Mills. Nice. He's from Akron. Oh, yeah. So I want to hear that sweet boy yet again. Um, and he's he a does cool. awesome in it. Yeah. He's got such a cool, uh, it's, it's his, to me, it's like his coolest cadence because he's got this very low, like, you know, all of us that play teenagers, yeah. uh, we really want to do, what we really want to do is like that brooding uh, lower pitch teenager, but Damon just does it better. <laughs> He's got, he's got a lot of brood because he can also play 50-year-old men. Yeah, right, from Uri and Ice when he's yeah. the coach. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, again, going back into the question, what was it like uh, getting the shows filled with great talent, and how is it like working on them, uh, being a writer for them? Uh, okay, so uh, on the, the writing end, it's like it's been pretty exciting because uh, since, since they turned the writing gigs into full-time gigs, um, right. A lot of people didn't need them to be, or didn't need a full-time job, or want a full-time job, and so basically, like I, uh, I was able to uh, do shows that were really better than I have been. <laughs> I got to rise up. I got to take on some challenging material. Let's put it like that. So I've done uh, Tokyo Ghoul. Uh, really? Yeah, the most or? recent season of Tokyo Ghoul. Uh, three? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Tokyo Ghoul Re, yeah. as it's called. Um, also, Full Metal Panic, uh, yeah, Attack on Titans, most recent season. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's been really fun and challenging and, and exciting. And it's like the material, like, I don't know, like I've cried several times while I'm like just sitting alone in a dark office writing, you know? And that it's nice to like have, that it's like a good cry because it's the fiction that you enjoy cry. Uh, and then Nambika, um, Nomica is my baby child, so I really hope you like it. Uh, I, I did, I got to do the scripts and then also direct off of my own scripts. So I was really able to uh, just engage like with all, like I like fully knew the characters, I fully knew the jokes, um, and, and I got a lot of time to just like collaborate with all of my favorite actors. It was 
it was a blast. So kind of going into that, how was it like becoming a director for just a short period of time? What was it like? Um, how was it like being directing some people? I mean, think about that. You've been in the industry now since you were nine years old. Yeah. And think about that. You had, you've worked with all these wonderful friends and now you're like directing these people who directed you so many years ago. So what was it like directing them? Yeah, it's pretty wild. Uh, yeah, I think the strangest is like, I, I directed uh, Caitlin Glass a little bit, which is like, you know, you have to ask yourself at this point, when you're directing Caitlin Glass, you have to ask yourself like, what right do I have to tell you how to say anything? Yeah. And so I was like, okay, well, you know what? She hasn't seen this episode before, so I can tell her what's going on. And you know, if, if uh, I think maybe she would want to do it again, like based on like her expression, I'll be like, Hey, that sounded like gold to me, but it looks like you want another pass. <laughs> yeah? Cool. <laughs> <laughs> again, we love Caitlin. Um, so, uh, again, the very first show you got to work on way back in the day was Fruits Basket uh, when you were just nine years old. What was it like knowing that it's now going to be a whole new reworking coming out of Japan, coming shortly within the 2019-2020 uh, season? What potentially do you f potentially see Funimation doing or maybe another production studio and hopefully getting you guys involved? Uh, so I I bet you I bet you Funimation is going to try really hard to get their hands on it um, because it's it was such an important title like I yeah. think in terms of like uh, DVD sell sold anime like I have seen more Fruits Basket DVDs yeah. than than, you can count. than anything that isn't Full Metal Alchemist right uh, and that's just you know and and that's that's me as somebody who was in one episode as hero and so I'm talking about like people bringing me the DVD so that's I can't imagine how many Fruits Basket DVDs like Jerry has seen. Anyway, uh, I my only question is, uh, will they bring back the original cast? Because the original, uh, nobody's grown up. Yeah, and and in Japan they didn't. In Japan they switched casts. Interesting. So it's worth questioning. But it would be really cool if they did. You know, and again, I've I actually have Fruits Basket on DVD myself. Uh, the uh, whole collection is one solid case, nice. and uh, I'm not gonna lie, I cry. Uh, a lot of it, especially, especially considering Lucy. Just, I mean, not, uh, yeah. no, not Lucy. Sorry, I always mix her up with uh, Travis's wife, Laura. Yeah, yeah, she Laura it makes me cry every fucking time. She is great. Uh, yeah, <laughs> wonderful woman. For me, it's Ko. It's uh, the the rice ball. Yeah. He's like, you've got a plum on your back. <laughs> I can see it. <laughs> it's so good. Um, and a really fun thing about you is that you happen to go work on The Walking Dead as a walker. What was it like working on that going to Atlanta? That was a good little time. Yeah. Uh, I, I did it to hang out with uh, some, some convention friends, basically. Like, we were all like, hey, this could pay for the price of the hotel room and ticket if we all do this and go in together. And so we like hung out for a week and spent a few days uh, just getting our heads chopped off. Getting shot, that kind of thing. Yeah. It was good fun. I was going to say, I uh, actually remember Brittany, and I remember hanging out with her, because that's yeah. how we actually met each other, was that the way that you and I met each other was at Colossal Con 2008. You and I played dodgeball in the rain with Vic, and I organized a dodgeball game for you guys. That was how you and I met each other. And I couldn't tell... Dodgeball games were rad. I miss that. We need to make that happen again. Well, the best part was that I couldn't tell you out of the crowd, because you were only like 15 years old, so yeah. you like blended in with the regular attendees, and your mom's like, where's Aaron? I'm like... Oh, uh, there he is. That was, that was always awesome. Was like, I could always just slip in. I, I, I still kind of can, yeah. uh, but like I could really do it back then when I was a teenager. I could just slip into the crowd and like nobody would recognize me. It was great. What nice am I, actor. <laughs> one of my other favorite memories of you is that you, um, we were at Colossal Con 2010 and it was during the tornado and I had to put you down in the basement with all the other attendees, and your mom comes down and she goes, hey Cameron, I'm like, hey Beth, and then I go, hey Aaron, and all these girls go, Whoof. and you looked at me like, thanks. You're stuck in a basement with all these fangirls. <laughs> I'm sure I internally loved it. <laughs> so again, this year you have to be, you got roasted last night by a wonderful panel of friends that yes. definitely got sidetracked more than once <laughs> and there were car crashes and baby pictures yeah. what was it like to be roasted by your friends it was actually awesome i i was very nervous about the the rebuttal part but luckily jeremy inman boshed his part so bad yeah. that i knew i would look good and so i was nerves free yeah, no nah, he did great he was very funny <laughs> yeah. It was, it was probably one of the best uh, roasts I've ever seen, especially considering yeah. Jerry then followed him after oh, that. Jerry was hilarious, yeah. yeah. 
Yes, Nick. <laughs> so, are there any upcoming projects you want fans to know about at this time? Um, I am currently working on Morose Mononokian. Uh, I'm the lead in that, uh, Ashia, or one of the two leads. Uh, oh, I'm the other one. And it's sort of like if uh, like a lighthearted X-Files or like uh, Mushishi, if anybody's seen that. Yeah, uh, so it's Mushishi. So it's like yokai uh, are, you know, little spirits and occasionally they get into our world and cause trouble. Uh, and we help them to f reach the other world. Yeah. Actually, I have Mushishi on DVD. Mushishi's awesome. Yeah. I love when Travis is doing the whole thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. Alrighty, now, again, finishing things up, where can we keep up with you online? And a message that for the fans that, like me, have been keeping up with you since you started your career, what message would you love to give to them? Um, okay, so for the follow, uh, Aaron Dismuke, Aaron underscore Dismuke at Twitter. Yep. Uh, yeah. Or at Aaron underscore Dismuke. Yep. That's how that works. Yes. I tweet all the time. Yes, you do. I, I tweet like once every two weeks, which is better than my Facebook, which is like once every six months. Yeah. Uh, and then a message. Thank you all for like being along for the ride. It's It's been awesome. I'm still very excited that I get to live the way that I've been getting to live. <laughs> To be honest with you, <laughs> to be honest with you, dude, I've always had so much fun with you, as you can totally tell between the giggles between us. Like we've grown up together in some capacity over the industry, and it's been wonderful to hang out with you all these years, my friend. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Bye.